Back in the Word of God today, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 17, but before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua Jesus Christ, the Messiah's precious, precious name. Matthew in the Greek tongue means the gift of God, and he definitely is a gift because he shows us Jesus Christ, who is King of Kings. Now, Matthew puts pen to paper, but these are the words of our living God. So let's get into this and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know, especially for these days we are living in right now. I'm going to go back up just a little bit, Matthew chapter 16, and I'm going to read verse 28, and that will lead us right into Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 16, verse 28, and it reads, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now Jesus Christ is talking to the disciples, and he's telling them that you will not die until you see me return. Now he's talking about his re resurrection. But I'm here and I'm seeing this and reading this going, there are some of us right now who will not taste of death until we see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. We are looking forward to that, but there's work to be done. So let's get into this and let's see how it's going to come down in these end days. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1, and it reads, And after six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. So we got Jesus Christ, Peter, James, and John. They go up on a mountain. Now we know this mountain today to be the Mount of Transfiguration. Let's keep reading. Verse 2, And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light, because he is the light. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Verse 3, And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. So now we have Moses, Elijah, and Jesus Christ in their uh, spiritual bodies, in their glorified bodies, standing before the disciples. Listen how, G how I'm sorry, listen how Peter responds. Verse 4, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. And again, Elias is Elijah. And sometimes I use those interchangeably, but just know we're talking about the prophet Elijah. But Peter is still thinking in the flesh. He sees Jesus Christ, Moses, and Elijah. He gets excited. He wants to build a, a tabernacle for them. Listen what happens. Verse 5, While he sp yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So God, our Heavenly Father, speaking, and they hear it. And he's saying, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Listen to him. And he's talking to us today as well. Listen to the word of God. Verse 6, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. Now they hit the deck. They hit the deck, folks. When Jesus Christ returns here, we're all going to hit the deck. For every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Verse 7, And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. That is something we got to remember in these end days. There is no need to be af afraid. As we see prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis. There's a lot of wickedness in the world today, but the negative part of God's plan must come to fruition for prophecy to be fulfilled as it is written. Let's keep reading. And when they had lifted up their eyes and saw, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. So he, Jesus Christ is just telling the disciples, don't tell anybody yet. It's just not time. It's not time for this information to be out. But today it is time for us to look at it and see what was going on. Let's keep reading. Verse 10, And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. Now, what is Jesus Christ referring to? We're going to go over to Malachi chapter 4. That is the last book in the Old Testament. And I'm going to go to the last chapter for, because it, it is here 
for us today. We're going to go over there and we're going to read it. It's a short chapter. We're going to read it and go through it. And then we're going to talk about these two witnesses of the end days. Malachi chapter 4 verse 1 and it reads, For behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall lead them neither root nor branch. The wicked and the wicked people of the world are going down. Now this is after the millennium. This is at the great white throne judgment. When all that offend will be done away with forever. Nothing that will offend, nobody that will offend will be with us in eternity. Know that we're in a vetting process right now. We're either going to follow our Heavenly Father and live with Him forever in His kingdom, or we're going to follow Satan. Satan is going down, folks. The man of sin is going down. Let's keep reading. Verse 2, we're in Malachi chapter 4, and it reads, But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, the Son of Righteousness, the light of the world, coming with healing in his wings for us. Now it says that we will grow up as calves of of the stall. Now, what that is referring to is when calves are kept in a barn in the stall uh, as protection from the elements during the winter months, but in the springtime they're released and they're running through the pasture. They're free and they're joyful. That's what we're going to have again. We're going to be back in a time where there is no pain, there is no worry, there is no. Uh, there's no evilness going to be with us. We are looking forward to that, but there is there is work to be done in the meantime. Let's keep reading. Verse 3, And ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and judgments. Again, Moses is brought up. Why is Moses brought up? Because I believe he is going to be one of the two witnesses that are coming. Now, let's read this next verse. Behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And Elijah, the other, the other witness in the end days. Now, let's read the, what is the purpose. Verse 6, And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So the heart of the fathers to their children, and the heart of the children to their fathers. There's two fathers, folks. There's our Heavenly Father who we love, we serve, we do His bidding. And then there's Satan. He is the father of the wicked. He is the wicked one. He's got children here. They love Him. They serve Him. They do His bidding. But he, and in the end days, this is to turn the hearts of the children to their fathers and the heart of the fathers to their children. It's going to be a vetting process like we've ne never, ever seen before. Are you ready for these days we're living in? Let's go into Revelation chapter 11. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. This is John uh, the Apostle speaking. We're going to pick up. We're going to start reading at verse 1, 11, uh, Revelation chapter 11, verse 1. And it reads, and there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. Now, a reed is used for measuring, but when you see that rod, you know that there is a, a correction coming as well. Verse 2, But the court which is without the temple, leave it out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. Now, this 40 and two months is half. Now, think back originally when we were given the seven years in Daniel. This is 40 and two months, which would have been half of that. Now, we know now because we go into Revelation, we read uh, chapter 9, verse 5, and uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 10, and it's, that time has been shortened down to five months. So, so two and a half months that this area is going to be trodden down under the foot of the gentiles let's read the next let's read the next voice first i'm sorry verse three and i will give power unto my two witnesses 
and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, days clothed in sackcloth. So this is the, the I believe the other half of that two and a half months uh, because that uh, 1,203 score days, 1,260 days is half of that uh, original seven years. So I believe that they will be here right before the Antichrist comes. Verse 4, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Now, you can read about this in Zechariah chapter 11. If you haven't seen it before, read it before, I have a teaching on it in the playlist. But let's keep reading. If any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Verse 6, these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. That is an earmark of Elijah. And have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. This is an earmark of Moses. Verse 7. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Now, the, the angel of the bottomless pit, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, that's Satan. He is the angel of the bottomless pit. He's the king over the locust army. He is a Satan. He is a, a Babdon, Apollyon, the son of perdition, a Lucifer. He's got a lot of different names he goes by. He's one entity, y'all. It is Satan. He is going to rise up and he's going to kill the two witnesses. Then what happens? And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, why, why would our Lord put Sodom and Egypt here? Because Jesus Christ was not um, crucified there. He was crucified on Golgotha right outside of Jerusalem. So these two witnesses are going to lay in the street in Jerusalem. But he says Sodom and uh, Egypt. Sodom is the place where we think about a great perversion. A great perversion. And then Egypt is symbolically, yes, they were, well, not, not symbolically. Realistically, they kept, they took the whole house of Israel captive. Put them in bondage. Made them slaves. So when we see that, we're going to see a perversion like we've never seen before, both physically and spiritually. And then we're also going to see captivity of the whole world. When the Antichrist comes here, sitting in the holy place, claiming to be God, he's going to have billions of people following him. How can I say that? Revelation chapter, verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 3. And the whole world wandered after the beast billions and billions of people because he is going to come in prosperously he's going to come in peacefully he's going to be beautiful he's going to be supernatural and they're going to believe this entity to be our savior but i'm going to stop right here before i go any further i want you to remember when he comes sitting in the holy place claiming to be god and you're still in flesh he's a liar and a loser i'm going to read it 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Y'all, that is in a moment. That is a time specified by our living God. Not any moment. In a moment specific. In the twinkling, twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. There's seven trumps, people. That's number seven. That's when Jesus Christ returns here. For the trumpet shall sound and we will all be changed to our spiritual bodies at that moment. Not before then, not after then, at that specified time given to us by our living God. Verse 8, back into Revelation chapter 11, and it reads, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street. We just read that. Let's go down to 9. And they... Of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put 
into graves, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry, and shall sing gifts one to another, because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. What was their torment? They were calling out Satan and the Antichrist for who he was. When he's telling you love is love and you can do whatever you want to, even though it's contrary to what the Word of God says, and everybody's wanting to do that, but these two witnesses are going to be calling him out for what for what and who he is, as well as what is being taught to the people, that you can do whatever you want to, it's fine. He's going to say, you can have whatever you need, prosperity, religion, on steroids. And they, the witnesses will be calling them out. Verse 11, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Those two dead bodies, think about it, hot sun decomposing, and then they're going to stand up after three and a half days. They're going to stand to their feet. There's going to be knees knocking that day. Verse 13. I'm sorry, verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Y'all, think about it. Think about it. There's going to be a, uh, a ceasing of all festivities when this happens. Let's see when Jesus Christ returns. Verse 13. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and the earthquake was slain of men, seven thousand, that's your seven thousand fallen angels, and the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. We will be praising the Lord because we know our Savior is returning. Verse 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe, cometh quickly and the seventh angel sounded and there was great voices in heaven saying the kingdom of this world are become the kingdom kingdoms of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever we are looking forward to that time folks we are so looking forward to that fine time but there is work to be done in the meantime so let's go back over here to matthew chapter 17 and we're going to pick it up at verse 12 and i said unto you that Eliza is already come and they knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed likewise shall also the son of man suffer of these things now he was referring to John the Baptist the last prophet who came in the spirit of Elijah well they didn't receive him they beheaded him they didn't receive Christ they crucified him verse 14 I'm sorry, verse 13. And the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Verse 14. And when they were come to the multitudes, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to the disciples and they could not cure him. Now, when you see lunatic, this is moonstruck. This is, I believe, a special kind of satanic possession. And we'll document that in just a minute. Verse 17, And Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Let's keep reading. And came the disciples to Jesus' part and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, what is he talking about moving mountains and, and uh, faith as small as a grain of a mustard seed? What is he talking about? It just takes a little bit of faith in our living God, prayer and fasting. We'll get to that in just a minute. But we can move. And when you think about mountains being symbolic of nations, 
we can move those Kenite nations, those nations, those people who are loving up on and serving Satan right now. We've been given that power. I'm going to go over to Luke chapter 10 and read this real quick. I'm going to start reading at verse 17. The 70 disciples had gone out and had been doing the work of the Lord. Let's listen. They're going to return back to Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 10. I'm going to start reading at verse 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Even the devils, the evil spirits, are subject to to us in the name of Jesus Christ. You've got to remember that. You've got to remember in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 18, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. What is he talking about? We know that Satan fell in the first earth age. He no longer wanted to be a protective cherubim. He wanted to be God. He still wants to be God. He thinks he's going to do it. But the fall of Satan was in the first earth age. And we also know that in Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse 7, that there is war in heaven. Uh, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought against Michael. And they, and they prevailed not. And they were cast down to the earth. And that is what we're talking about when Satan will be cast down here on the earth as the Antichrist and all his fallen angels with him. So, verse 19 in Luke chapter 2, 10, and it reads, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is why we have been given, when we have that little bit of faith, we can move those filthy Kenite nations away from us in the name of Jesus Christ. When he says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, Satan and all his little workers, we have power over them in the name of Jesus Christ. How do we do it? We rebuke them in Jesus Christ's name. Get thee hence, Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go back over to Matthew chapter 17. And I'm going to pick it up at 21. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. So this is why I also think that it was a very severe satanic possession of this child. Because by prayer and fasting, remember when um, Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 was in the wilderness. He fasted for 40 days and he was praying for 40 days. And who came and who came and tempted him? It was Satan. How did Satan tempt Jesus Christ? with scripture with scripture that's why we have to know what the word of god has to say and i'm not talking about verbatim we've got to have a working knowledge of god's plan for these days we are living in right now so when it comes up and we see these things happen we can rebuke satan and his evil workers in the name of jesus christ and they gotta go they gotta flee verse 22 and while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again, and they were exceeding sorry. So Jesus Christ again is preparing them for what's going to happen, just like the Word of God over and over and over prepares us for these end days. Jesus Christ says, These people, these are the people of the church. They are going to kill me. They are going to crucified me and he will be resurrected on the third day and they were sorry for why because they still are seeing things in the flesh now we see this as um we can look at it at hindsight and we can say but this is for a good this is because jesus christ brought us that perfect gift of salvation that through his death burial and, and resurrection he could overcome the one who was power of death and that is to say satan but, of course, you know, they are living it. They're right there. They love the Lord. They don't want him to go away. Verse 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? Now, this is a tribute to the tabernacle. Uh, it's a. It will be a one half shekel for her person for the temple, for the tabernacle. Verse 25. And he saith, Yes. 
And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Who do, who do the people of the world uh, take money from? Their children? Mm -mm. They take it from strangers, people they don't know. But that, there is a twofold meaning here. Jesus Christ came here that through his death, burial, and resurrection, we have been uh, paid for. He has paid the price for us because we are his children. We are children of the kingdom. That tribute has been paid by our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Verse 26, Peter saith unto him of strangers, Jesus saith unto them, him, then are the children free. That's why we're free, folks. Because Jesus Christ has paid in full our tribute for our sins to bring us that perfect gift of salvation. He did it. Our Lord God Almighty did it because he loves us. He loves his children. He loves his children. Verse 27 <clears throat> Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hick, and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money, and take it and give it unto them for me and thee. So one shekel, take that piece of money and give it to them for us. But when you see this, when you see this fish in here, remember what that is. Ichthus in the, in the Greek, and it stands for Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, who paid the price for us. Y'all, he paid the price for us that through belief upon him, he gives us that perfect gift of salvation. And we know that things are revving up right now as we see prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis. But know that at the end of all this, we're going to be back home with our Heavenly Father in His goodness and His glory forever. And nothing that offends will be with us in eternity. And we know that. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you liked today's teaching. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And let's get the word out. I hope you have a great day and join us again.